Now, turning to our program, please welcome the Director of Community Engagement and Inclusion at Visit Milwaukee to introduce our speaker. Thank you, President Leslie. Good afternoon, everybody. Fellow Rotarians, it's such a pleasure to be here with you today. And I'm especially thrilled because I get to introduce someone very special to me. An incredible Milwaukee native through and through, Peggy William Smith. Peggy also has deep roots in the hospitality industry. Before joining Visit Milwaukee, Peggy worked for Marcus Hotels and Resorts for over 22 years and held leadership positions at various levels throughout that company. I have the privilege of working alongside Peggy at Visit Milwaukee, and let me tell you, she's not just our CEO. She's a force of nature. Peggy's passion for our city is infectious, and it's no surprise that she's been leading the charge to put Milwaukee on the map. Since taking the helm as our first female president and CEO, yes, that deserves an applause. Peggy's brought a whole new energy to our team. Her creativity knows no bounds. I can speak to that. And she's been the driving force behind some of the most exciting campaigns and conventions yet. But what really sets Peggy apart is her determination and commitment to our community. Even when times got tough during the pandemic, she never wavered in her dedication to making Milwaukee, to making sure that Milwaukee thrived. And let me tell you, Peggy's not just about business. She's about business, but she's not just about business. She's a true believer in giving back, whether it's through mentoring women in business, or getting involved in charitable causes close to her heart. I know she's got some incredible things to share today, so let's give a warm welcome, a warm rotary welcome to Peggy William Smith. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, everyone, for having me here today. I'm really excited to share some of the things that have been happening in the city that have happened already and that are gonna happen. Um, first, I want to say that I have seen an incredible difference. So whenever someone says that there's things that have been done through me, by me, I have a fantastic team who does amazing things, who know how to market the city. But it's really all of you and what you do every day that have made the tide turn in the way people talk about this city. And our jobs at Visit Milwaukee, we don't own anything. We don't make anything. We tell the stories, and we tell the stories of what each of you are doing in your businesses. And the things that you are doing in your businesses and the way you're talking about it have transcended the way we used to talk about ourselves. And that has what made my job infinitely easier in making sure that everyone knows all of the good things that are happening in the city. So Visit Milwaukee is a 501c6, and we know that a health, the health of our community depends on a strong tourism economy. A place that people want to visit is a place that people want to live. That's a place where people work and it's a place where business wants to be. We know that. The things that each of you love about the city are the same things that tourists love when they come into the city. So they go hand in hand and you don't know where it starts on the wheel. That's why it's a wheel. It could start with a visit. I've had the opportunity to speak to people throughout the city. I was at an event of almost a year ago with a young woman who walked up and I had my name tag on and it's a different name tag, which I'll get to later. Um, and she walked up and she said, are you with Visit Milwaukee? And I said, I am. And she said, so I visited Milwaukee once for a conference and then the pandemic happened. And I thought to myself, you know what? When the pandemic is over, I am going to leave the city I grew up in, in New Jersey, and I am going to find someplace else to live. So I started following social media channels and Visit Milwaukee was one of the social media channels I followed. She fell in love with our city. 30 year old, young African-American woman, sight unseen, I mean, seen in a convention once years ago, picked up and moved to Milwaukee. She's still here. She works for Milwaukee Tech Hub Coalition. I, I you know, tell this story because it does start with a visit. And the things that have happened here, she was so amazed 
by the new leadership, the fresh leadership, all of the things that make it easy for us at Visit Milwaukee to sell the city. So like I said, we're a 501c6. We are funded through room tax dollars through the Wisconsin Center District. The Wisconsin Center District was formed in 1994 to build the then Midwest Express Center. It was completed in 1998, and um, it has been, you know, so this is gets very emotional for me that we're about to unveil the expansion in a little over a month, um, but we are funded through a contract with them. So they receive the room tax dollars. We sign a contract every four or five years to receive a percentage of that hotel tax so that we can go out and market and sell the city. Destinations International is the organization that oversees destination management organizations such as ourselves throughout the world. They have over a thousand members and they accredit us as an official destination management organization. I wanted to share just a little bit of our team. We have a fantastic team. You see up there, Charlotte heads up our, she's our VP of Human Resources. Misha is our brand new chief financial officer. Leslie has been on the road for the last three weeks. You usually don't see her in Milwaukee because she's on the road selling our city. Josh Albrecht is our Vice President of Communications. Claire is our VP of Communications and Advocacy. Michelle Hader oversees event experience. That's the group of people who take care of the guests when they're here visiting. And then obviously, you know, Tony, the newest member to our senior team as the Director of Community Engagement and Inclusion. And then this is our full team. We are a sales and marketing organization. That is the majority of what we do. We are on the road at 60 trade shows and sales missions each and every year, making sure that we're telling everyone all the good things that are happening in the city. And on the marketing side, we're digitally showcasing Milwaukee in print, in digital, in web advertising, in ways that you probably don't want to know about because we can target what you watch on TV and then see if you come to visit us. We have over 950 partner businesses, and we're really proud of the fact that we're a partner organization. The barrier to entry is incredibly low. We actually had an uh, industry event is in the city right now, 900 people, eight to 900 people from an a organization called SimpleView. That is our CRM. That's what does CRM for organizations such as ours. And this morning, we were fortunate enough to be able to pick the keynote speaker and our keynote speaker this morning was Dr. Stacia Thompson from Sherman Phoenix. And I will be hiring her. She, she could take my place. The way she talked about tourism was absolutely fantastic. But she talked about how the barrier to entry for our organization is so low and what it can do for those small businesses. Just to give you an example, Noel Alvarado is a young tennis shoe designer. He was the youngest member of Sherman Phoenix when it started, not even 21. We saw him. We asked him to design sneakers for us to be on the trade show floor. We called them Cheese Force Ones. We can't do that anymore. Cease and desist letter from Nike. So now they're called Cream City Kicks. But we were on the trade show floor and all of our counterparts were coming up to us. And they were like, who did that? This is awesome. Give us his name. Well, we gave his name and he now designs for probably close to 10 destinations. We're mad because we thought it was an exclusive. No, I'm just kidding. But this is the economic impact that tourism can create, not just through traditional, the, the, the way that you traditionally think it does, by coming in and eating at your restaurant, shopping in your store, seeing your show, but showcasing people in Milwaukee while we're on the road so they know that we're more than just a tourist destination. Um, our numbers will come out in June for 2023. So these are 2022 numbers. Tourism is big business. It's the third largest industry in the state, and Milwaukee is the largest contributor to tourism in the state. That's huge. It produces or it supports over 26,000 full-time jobs in Milwaukee County alone. And then when you move it out to the four-county area, which is Milwaukee, Waukesha, Ozaki, and Washington, it's nearly 50,000 jobs. It will be. I've gone up. So what does Visit Milwaukee have in store for 2024? I just I did briefly touch on it, the Baird Center expansion, $456 million. It is going to double the size of our exhibition space, which puts us in an entirely different playing field than we've been in for the last decade. While when we opened our convention center in 1998, we were on the precipice of being a meetings and convention city, we did not grow. We did not grow as fast as our competitors did. So when we just did a recent report with our existing ex um, footprint of convention center space, out of our peer cities, 20 peer cities that we chose, 
We were 19. This expansion will bring us up to number 10. So we still have a ways to go. We know that there's more that we have to do, but this is the start of us being able to host events that we've never been able to host before. So, you know, the expansion, Marty has done an amazing job. The events that we're able to bring in, our first dual event, which is really what we were thinking when this was built. Yes, can we bring in larger events? Absolutely. But this will allow us to have a group move in while another group is moving out, thus keeping our hotels and all of that tourism economy busier during that time frame. So we're incredibly excited. We know that the industry, we hadn't hosted an industry event since 2013. Simple View is here right now, and we're hosting Marketing. Connect. This is Good Things Brewing. Good Things Brewing is a TV show that we la launched last year. My husband like hates it when I say it because now I can say I'm an Emmy-nominated producer. It was nominated for an Emmy last year, um, and our second season launched this year. It does air here locally on TMJ4, but that's not – I mean, we want you to see what you can do in the city of Milwaukee, but we also want everyone else. So it airs in – 15 different markets throughout the Midwest. And we paired that with a marketing, um, you know, specific, specific marketing initiatives in which we saw travelers from those areas increase. So we can measure who's coming here from where based on credit card data, based on, you know, leaving your phone if you're a parent and you've got Life360 on, we know where you are when you're here. And we've been able to see that increase based on this TV show. I'm incredibly proud um, three weeks ago, we hosted a premiere for season 21 of Top Chef. This is the first time the hosts have come to a city since season one, and they chose Milwaukee to come to. Um, you know, I'm not always right. Like I said, I have an amazing team. They were amazing. I had had some pretty bad experiences, in my opinion, in working in my previous role with food TV shows, thinking it was going to save me and put me on the map, and it didn't. Not me personally, but the restaurant that I was um, overseeing. And um, they said, Peggy, you don't understand the power of Top Chef. You don't understand people travel based on the show. And they absolutely do. Um, this has been amazing. The hosts fell in love with our city. They were in Paris and London the two years prior to being here in Milwaukee. They didn't want to leave. Their producers loved us so much that they brought the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City back in February. In February. That's a secret that won't that won't air for a while. So let's we can all keep this in the room that they did actually come here and film. It was all over Twitter, but um, they they brought them here on a private jet in February and it was seventy degrees. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, it was so this will air tomorrow night, um, episode four. They we contracted for six episodes. They love the city so much they filmed ten here. And you will see local Milwaukeeans. Um, Dr. Thompson this morning was telling the entire group of tourism professionals that she is now a TV star because she was highlighted last week on Top Chef. And it brings us to what we have always known. We are a culinary destination, right? We are absolutely a culinary destination, but this has validated that. Eater named us one of the top 12 places to eat in the world in 2024. In the world. One of only three U.S. locations. And uh, Gail from Top Chef tweeted, do you think we had anything to do with this? Yes, you absolutely did. Thank you. We are also the city of festivals. We are launching a promotion um, later this week to make sure that our hotels are filled, starting with the very first festivals. Um, you know, we have festivals throughout the city. They're not just held down at the lakefront. Those are where our largest festivals are, but we'll pr be promoting those throughout the entire summer. Uh, Festa Italiana is back at the Summer Fest grounds the last week of May, followed by Pride Fest and all the festivals that go beyond there. And we know that we haven't gotten back to occupancy numbers in 2019. So anything we can do to help fill those hotels who bring in visitors who then go out and spend money throughout the city is our number one goal. We also do passes. We're launching a summer savings pass, but this is available to all of you as well. They're not apps. You can download it and pin it to your home screen so that you can save while you're here in Milwaukee being a tourist in your own town. And I would absolutely suggest that you do that. So now that brings me to our brand project and why, why we rebrand, why we're doing this. So 
So for those of you who know the building right next door attached with the beautiful wings, um, that logo was introduced in 2005. And it was the right logo at the right time. Designed by Santiago Calatrava, it was something that was incredible. And I have been very proud for the last five years to wear it everywhere I go. But we knew it was time for a change because it didn't represent the entire city. We talked to people who live on the north side or the south side, and they didn't feel like they could see themselves reflected in this brand. And we did a lot of research to make sure that we talked to people throughout our city so that we could really represent the entire, um, the entire community. This is an entirely frightening project for someone like me. This is taking something, and even though we're branding our company, it's how we sell our city on the road. So, you know, did I love it? Did I, have, have I been completely nervous during this entire thing? I have been. But I think that the people we engaged and the people we talked to really helped me to see just how inclusive this new brand is and how it will set the stage for the next five years. And I say five years because we should be doing a brand re refresh every five years, something that just didn't happen in the past. And we need to make sure that we're staying up to date and that we're selling Milwaukee as Milwaukee is and not as Milwaukee was. So strategy and research, we did what we call a DNEC survey. That's done by destination management. So that's looking at what people look at from a tourism perspective, but the people here in the city, because it's what you say about the city that people listen to, not what I say about the city. We also did a partner survey. Um, we also did a survey that you could get to through our weekly insights. We also um, looked at the Wisconsin Perception Study. That was done by the WEDC back um, in 2021. Some interesting information about that study. What do you think the number one thing people think about when they think about Wisconsin? The number one thing. It's cheese. Guess what the number two thing is? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Right? That's an opportunity. My team sees that as a huge opportunity. Number three was cold. Now, that's not, I'm not saying, because there were states that number one was nothing. But when you look at Illinois, Chicago was number one. There's an opportunity for us to at least slide into number two so that it's not nothing as we move forward. Um, and then we looked at the Milwaukee Tech Impact Report. We looked, we did a business journal survey. We also did listening sessions through community outreach. We employed P3 Development. Janine, who's a whiz at, at um, market research, had her talk to people. We reached out to every alder person, every county, every county supervisor, every area throughout the city and the county to make sure that we heard voices in what we're doing. And then we did feedback sessions when we first started to, un to unveil some of this stuff. And what we came down to is fresh flavor and forward. And here it is in Spanish, fresco, sabor, adelante. Thank you, Tony. And these are our place pillars. This is what we heard from all of you. We heard that water is important to who we are, but it's not just our lake, it's our rivers, it's our access to water. It's everything we talk about when we talk about our city, but it's also access, it's opportunities, it's two new leaders, well, all new leaders in the city, a new county executive, a new mayor, a new county supervisor, new common council president. It is all of these people who are excited about what the city is doing and its bold ideas. When we talk about flavor, we talk about our cultural diversity, we talk about our neighborhoods, our 191 distinct neighborhoods. We talk about the communities and we know, we know that we have nostalgia. And we don't want to let that go, but we're not leading with it. And we talk about our architecture. And then we're a people of city, of a city of people. I said that backwards. A city of people. And our people are what sets us apart. And I hear that all the time. When we were um, bidding on the RNC two years ago, uh, sorry, about a year ago, we, we already had it. And 2028 was being decided. And we had the city who was looking at 2028 here. And then they asked to meet with my team. And what they said in the room was, I, I'm, I know that we all say we have amazing people, but you have amazing people. Like we have not met anyone who isn't warm, open, inviting. It was, I mean, and this was all tourism professionals for a, a large city 
that have been doing this for years. And it just shows that is that is what makes us is our people. We're a city that loves to celebrate. We love our festivals. We have energy and momentum and a collaborative spirit. For the for the most I've ever seen in my time of 53 years being in the city, it's the most collaborative we've ever been. So we took inspiration from things that you see in our city. And as you can see, you know, the Home Bridge, the Domes, Fiserv Forum, and this is the logo we came up with. If you see, it's the three M's. In the negative space, you see seven M's, which represents the M7. It is everything that we heard and people see themselves in this when we do this. There's a heart. The heartbeat of the city runs through a vibrant pulse of energy that flows through Milwaukee, radiating through all the neighborhoods and beating to a new rhythm that is confident and optimistic. We had two um, cities visit us last year, Salt Lake City and Portland. And they came in. It was a group of public-private. It was their civic leaders. It was their business owners. It was their tourism people. And I was fortunate enough to be able to speak to them. And it was at the Third Street Market Hall. And when my counterpart got up, he said, this was Portland, I, I want us to have swagger. Milwaukee has swagger. And I was like, oh, we have swagger. <laughs> we waited a long time to hear that. Um, our water, so important. It shaped our past, our present, and our future. It's the basis for innovation, for industry, and inspiration. And we celebrate this force that is every part of who we are, that touches every neighborhood, and it is what makes us distinct. And then our diversity. Tourism in Milwaukee isn't just about one place or one person. It's the breadth of Milwaukee's tourism experiences that reflect the diversity in our community. And that is what we're proud to represent when we're on the road, when we're here, when we're on the news, wherever we are talking about Milwaukee. Um, the font for the full visit Milwaukee is um, designed by a Milwaukeean. We used an or, uh, a, a firm called Occupop who did the branding for us. And they took inspiration within Milwaukee's storied history, signage, and buildings. Our color palette reflects the colors of the city. The Great Lakes, our clear skies, of course, lager, celebration, um, midnight, and our cream city brick. This is some ways that you can see it being used throughout the city. And this is some ways that our different neighborhoods and our festivals and some of our partners can use it. This is what it looks like on logoed merchandise, which will be available online through one of our partners, Reyes Retail. So we will be selling this. So if you want to rep your city while you're out on the road, we'd love to have you do that. We're calling the symbol the mayor did. He calls it the flow. This is the flow. We call this the tread that runs down, kind of looks like a motorcycle. Oh, and there we go. There's Harley Davidson with the new logo. This is our visitor center at the airport. So this is just what it would look like after we rebrand it. And then, like I said, 60 trade shows and sales missions each and every year. We also do research with meeting planners. We do a two advisory councils each and every year where we ask them, what makes you choose a city for your conventions? They said that standing out on the trade show floor makes a difference. This is our new trade show booth that we'll unveil here in Milwaukee for Connect, which is 1,200 meeting planners coming to do a live site tour here in Milwaukee, August 27th through the 30th. So that's when we'll see this um, first trade show booth. And then we got feedback. Like I said, we've been having listening sessions. We've tweaked some things. We've made some changes based on the pillars, based on what we've heard from some of you in this room, because I know some of you in this room have been part of those listening sessions, as well as throughout the city. And then our phase launch plan, we officially launched the brand April 16th. So you're getting a sneak preview. We've been wearing the pin, but it will be officially launched um, next week at a uh, business power lunch and then a press conference afterwards. This is what it can look like with graphics behind it. The graphics can move. We're really excited. We've had people who've come to us, see it on me, ask to wear it. Right, Antoine? 
Yes. So um, you'll see more of this throughout. Um, you know, obviously having a brand for 20 years, if you see something with the old logo, let us know so we can make that change because it's everywhere. And these are things that we have to continue to work through. So now I'm going to go into some major events and happenings that are happening in the city. Connect Marketplace, like I said, is August 27th through the 30th. That takes place at the brand new Baird Center where we're able to showcase not just the Baird Center. We'll be at the Harley Davidson Museum. We'll be in the Deer District. We'll be showcasing. We'll be doing tours of neighborhoods so that people know how great Milwaukee is. Um, this here, I don't, I'm, I'm sure you're all aware, we are a cruise destination, 33 cruises last year. I think it's 32 this year. I briefly glanced at it. 13,000 passengers, Viking, two ships, designed specifically to cruise the Great Lakes, 278 crew to 315 passengers. Our team is out there to, grab, to welcome every single cruise ship. Tony used to oversee our um, volunteers, and our volunteers were always out there with a smile and playing, some of them even playing the uh, um, accordion to welcome those guests off those German cruise ships. Summerfest started something new, Summerfest Tech, a few years ago. It has really taken off. This is something that also sets us apart. Anytime that you, any of you have anything that you're doing in the city that you think is unique, we like to highlight that. We like to make sure that we're able to share that information, not just to locals, but to our meeting planners. Leslie, our VP of sales, does a, uh, a bi-weekly newsletter, Five and Five, in which she talks about the great things that are happening here. We do a leisure newsletter that goes out to nearly 100,000 people every other week as well that tells everything that's going on in the city. Uh, Harley-Davidson, as I'm sure you're all aware, is no longer just doing every five years. They're doing every year. The difference is there will only be a parade every five years. Um, but this will be a huge win for the city. They're trying to make it like Bike Week in Daytona or Sturgis. Um, and we help to hope them, help to hope that, help. We will help them to get to those numbers. Um, they are, we were just in Daytona in March for Bike Week. Our team was out there. Pre we do what we call pre-promote. So we go to a convention the year before it's in our city to make sure people come to the city register. And this was an amazing experience. We had people from all over the world saying, this is awesome. Now I can make it. IndyCar is coming back to Milwaukee at State Fair. If you are interested, if you are interested, there are still sponsorship opportunities. I am not per personally selling them, but we want this to succeed. It's over Labor Day weekend. It will be fantastic. Women's College Volleyball Showcase. We all saw how Women's sports has just taken off from a viewer perspective, and this will be amazing. So this will be downtown at the Pfizer Forum over Labor Day weekend this year. We're hosting the 2025 draft, and you say, no, you're not hosting it. Green Bay is hosting it. They have 4,000 hotel rooms. We will also be hosting the NFL draft. They've engaged us. If there's anything that you would like to be involved with, we are meeting with them on a monthly basis. My team is heading out to Detroit this week. Is it this week? Next week? The draft is coming up to um, see what Detroit is doing and how we can activate Milwaukee when they're here in the area in 2025. We're also hosting uh, rounds one and two of the um, NCAA championship men's next year. And we're currently bidding on women's final four for 27 and 28 basketball, women's volleyball championship in 27 and 28, and rounds one and two, men's basketball 27 and 28. We are ranked in the top 10 for best states in public golf. Yes, and we, and you can only golf what? Maybe if you're my husband, maybe 200 days a year. But um, this is, you know, this is thanks to all of those tournaments that we've been able to host and the eyes watching us and a concerted effort, effort by the state to make sure that people know how great it is to golf in the state of Wisconsin. We're hosting the RNC, um, as you all, I'm sure, are aware. Yes, the number is still $200 million in economic impact, even if you saw the New York Times article. Um, I will address the New York Times article. Um, so right now, the hotels are booked. They are booked, but some of the hotels don't know who's staying in them. They start with the delegations. For any convention, the delegates are the most important people coming to the city. They're the ones who officially name the candidate for that party. The delegations just started being announced last week. We have 109 hotels 
for this convention. Chicago, same amount of people, 28 hotels. This is a huge cue for us. We need to be speaking po positively about this. We know what this did for Cleveland. Cleveland also had over 100 hotels. They've now hosted the NBA All-Star Game. They've hosted MLB All-Star Game. They've hosted major industry events. Is everyone going to be booked five days at their highest price ever? No. That's not going to happen, and that's not anything we've ever said. But we do know the economic impact and the 15,000 credentialed journalists coming to the city telling our stories. And they have asked. We did the media walkthrough yesterday. They love the city. They love the walkability. They love what they're seeing when they come here. This was um, just some of the statistics from hosting the first GOP debate. And our sales leads have doubled since we announced the RNC. I'd be remiss. We need volunteers. 501c3, it's not political. These are people that you see that are welcoming guests to our city. And if that's something that interests you, make sure you scan one of these, or if you're still interested in being part of the venue directory. And then we like to talk about this. When I go on the road, I talk about all of the things that are happening, not just the things that are happening at what you would consider traditional tourism. You know, we are experiencing unprecedented, unprecedented investment. We are, I think, I think I just read 45th of cities for downtown um, companies moving downtown, and our office occupancy is in the top 10 right now, compared to others. Those are some downtown numbers. Some of the new hotels, the trade opened. It's the first full service hotel that opened in downtown since the pandemic. The Kin is also, it's not a full service, even though they have a restaurant. It is um, a great hotel. You'll see it on Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. But um, they, you, you have to you use your own key to get in. Entertainments and attractions, the Iron District, bringing to us our um, first USL soccer team, Vivarium, the Foxtown Landing in Milwaukee Dog, Dog Park, amazing on the corner of Plankington and St. Paul. FPC Live is about to break ground. That's going to be in the gravel lot. Um, that is the old Bradley Center lot. Obviously, the Milwaukee Public Museum, that groundbreaking is taking place on May 4th. The Hops L-Line Extension, which goes to the lakefront. The Associated Bank River Center with the Reps, $75 million renovation. Moss Universal Park and the Opportunity Center. I will tell you, in the conversation I had at my CEO conference, they talk about accessibility, and we are an accessible city. That is something that sets us apart from a lot of our peers, which is something for us to be incredibly proud of. Over 80% of the population identifies with some sort of disability. And, and if we're not addressing that, then we're being left behind. Some of the retail and restaurant that have happened, and then our newsletter. So every week, I send out a newsletter. As you can tell, my job is to speak positively about Milwaukee. Um, it's very rare you'll ever see me saying anything negative. I know that we have issues. I know there's things we have to address as, in a, as a community, and we work behind the scenes. That's part of why we created Tony's position, which is a new position for us, so that we can help to make the city better as a whole. But my job is to talk positively, so this newsletter focuses on the positive. So if there's ever anything that you want to know or you want to share, you can send it to me, and we'll put it out in this newsletter. It goes out to over 5,000 people. It tells you all of the conventions that are coming in. It tells you the marketing that we we have out. It tells you the, the guests who come in. It gives you all of that information. And then our annual meeting takes place Tuesday, June 18th in the brand new Baird Center, in the brand new Baird Ballroom with the after party on the Baird Skyview deck. And I think I am through. <laughs> And now I'll take any questions. Thank you, Peggy. If you have a question for Peggy, you may use this microphone here. Um, as always, please keep your questions concise and topical. Thank you. It was a very upbeat presentation, so I'm going to ask a downbeat question. The Times article also talked about the possibility of the convention being canceled. 
Are you hearing anything about that at all amongst the people that you talk with? No. So they have to. So just to give you some backstory, in 2020, the DNC had to come to, well, Paula would know this, wouldn't you, Paula? They had to make a set special exception to the rules to not have Joe Biden be here to accept the nomination. The Republicans didn't do that. Donald Trump did fly to Char Charlotte, thank you, Charlotte, to do it. So no, there is at this point absolutely no possibility. He will be here. He will accept the nomination here in Milwaukee. Then an update question. Uh, the Frozen Four is this weekend in Minneapolis. You didn't mention that you might be bidding for that kind of stuff, NCAA hockey tournaments. Are you going to think about that? We are. So with the new renovations to um, American Family Field, there are several things that we weren't able to bid on. The existing American Family Field only heats 20 de degrees above the outside temperature. So now they are going to renovate it so that it's fully temperate. And that renovation begins at the end of this season and then continues at the end of 2025. So there's several conventions that we're looking at. We have a mayor who's very, very much a wrestling fan. So we're also looking at some wrestling events as well. Thank you, Peggy. Great job. Makes me even more proud to call Milwaukee my hometown. You might want to put those QSR codes back up there for the volunteers because people didn't get to snap on them very quickly. Um, can we find a better place to dock the cruise ships other than next to Jones Island? So they are working on that. So there was a grant that was given, and I want to say that it was um, that they that the increase in pricing, now they have more money to raise. But they do know that they want it to look better. We do a great job when we're out there. Even though it's not the best entrance into the city, our volunteers make them feel so welcome with the gifts that they give that they're like, this is the best thing we've ever, no one greets us like this in any other city. And just to give an example of the, what the cruise business does for us, we have a local female business entrepreneur who started Milwaukee Food and City Tours about 15 years ago. She now runs Milwaukee um, uh, excursions. Her business is, I can't even tell you, I want to say it went from a record $5 million to like $30 million. She's doing excursions throughout the Great Lakes. Hi, Peggy. Brent F. Lawson, Milwaukee Small Business Coach. Obviously focusing a lot on small businesses. How did they engage? Because you've got an amazing, I mean, you've done an amazing job repping the entire city and the photography is amazing. And the names are mostly known to people here, but there's a lot of smaller businesses on lots of main streets around the city. How do they engage with Visit Milwaukee to be able to tell their story in a way that then you can broadcast that story with your audience? So we do events. My team is out talking to small groups like this. I think I've done 15 chambers this year so that we can get those stories because we don't know all the stories. I did one of the sessions with um, Judge Mosley and I had someone raise their hand who is doing Milwaukee's first urban hydroponic farm and he had not connected with us and that was an opportunity so this is what we're doing we want people to understand what we can help do because we want to highlight those businesses that make us unique and special hello hello thank you for the pen <laughs> you're welcome um so i am a sports fan and recently the NBA All-Star Game was in Indianapolis, and afterwards, there were updates to the requirements of a city um, to host said All-Star Game. Where do we fit in that? Have we reached the point where we can do that, or are we still a bit ways away? Well, according to those guidelines, 90% of the cities in the United States can't host that event. You had to have five... Five, three five stars, five star hotels. There are only thirteen that have that. You have to have seventy five flights, direct flights in your city. Um, we're a little over thirty right now, um, but but a lot of these cities didn't have those things. So we're not going to give up. We're still going to talk. We're still going to work on getting that event. We think it's Cleveland got it after they hosted the RNC. So we're hoping that that's the springboard. I was just wondering if you can clarify your comments. I think you said that Milwaukee has five times the number of hotels that Chicago did. That it doesn't seem right, and I was just curious. Oh, not okay. So then, let me clarify. 
Milwaukee, not Milwaukee, we have to use 109 hotels to host these 50,000 guests going as far south as the Racine Kenosha area all the way to Madison. The RNC did make the commitment to keep all of this economic impact in the state of Wisconsin, whereas um, with the, you know, in, in the, we don't have enough hotels here in Milwaukee. We're at 19,000 hotels, 19,000 hotel rooms in Milwaukee County. So we always knew with both the DNC and the RNC, we'd have to go outside of, of the city proper. Hi, uh, the local news is sort of depressing to watch um, and I've, I've stopped. Um, what are you doing to work on making the news a little bit more positive? Because most of my relatives think it's kind of scary to be in Milwaukee. Yeah, it's a very good question. We do monitor it. We try to push out as many of the good stories as we can. We send press releases on behalf of the businesses that we represent to all of the local news stations because we know that um, day tourism is just as important as overnight tourism to our small business owners. Um, it's something that we're looking at in terms of how we build a strategy to do that, but also recognizing that we need to be, you know, it, there's a huge difference, right? If I'm in Oshkosh or somewhere in the state, they tend to focus on the negative things that are happening here in the city. But when we have people come in from outside of the city um, or from outside of the state, they're like, this is safe. This is an incredibly safe city. You know, I think a lot of that has to do with Beth Wyrick in downtown Bid 21 for those that are coming in for conventions. The city looks amazing. We have the downtown clean sweep ambassadors who remove any um, graffiti within 24 hours. And they do amazing things that make us an easier city to sell when we're bringing people in for meetings and conventions. But you are right. We do monitor. We see the negative. We do have conversations with those stations trying to bring up the good things. Thank you. Hello. Hey, Peggy. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Uh, really want to get a pin, so I'll just throw that out. <laughs> I'll get you uh, one. <laughs> um, wanted to ask, you mentioned how you work uh, from a partnership perspective. Can you talk about how some of the work you've done to make diverse businesses accessible and then how easy the price is? The number always shocks me, so I wanted to say yes. that loud. So uh, like I said, a lot, of, a lot of our types of organizations throughout the country, there's two different types. They're either partnership-based or they're not partnership-based. We want people to be able to speak well about the city. So we do, we are a partnership base where you pay. We started something three years ago where we have, if you're a business under $100,000 and you are BIPOC woman, veteran owned, it's a $99 rate. And you get all of the same benefits as someone who's paying $699. And our rates aren't that expensive to begin with, but it's a way for us to make sure that there's skin in the games so that you go into the, our website, make sure that you're, storefront, your win your website is up to date. But we also found in this, we have an idea committee, we call it IDEA, it's uh, our DEI committee, where we meet on a regular basis and talk about some of those barriers to entry. We had a small restaurant, two people work it, the owners, they're in the kitchen, they didn't know how to upload pictures and that's why they weren't joining. So we went out and we helped them do that. We just unlaunched, uh, unveiled a new program called Sparks, where every one of our 25 IDEA committee members can go out and bring a new partner in that is a minority-owned business and sponsor them. The, the onus is on that mentor to help them get their website uploaded onto ours to make sure that there's visibility, but then and then to make sure that they bring them to at least two events throughout the year. Thanks for asking. Eric. This will be our last question. Yeah, hi Peggy. Uh, I, for those of us that travel for a living, um, we, we get to see and visit a lot of different cities. And one of the things that I didn't see is just how affordable Milwaukee is compared to other cities, just in terms of entertainment, uh, restaurant costs, uh, everything. The whole experience is, I, I think, uh, is much more economical than visiting other cities. I was in San Francisco and wow. Um, so I'm wondering if you could comment on that, if that's a point or if that's anything that's ever discussed or where we sit vis-a-vis um, -vis some of our competitors. Thank you. It 100% it is um, a talking point in all of our proposals. Um, but I will tell you, when you do a destination attractiveness report for meetings and conventions, that does not come up as one of the top 
20 variables that they look at. So, um, you know, we do talk about it. It's always in our top 10 things when we're submitting a proposal for a potential group, but we really lead, they, they want to know more about what is our score on the Equal Rights Commission. They want to understand what we're doing to make sure that tourism is inclusive. Those are the questions we get asked. Sustainability, that's the stuff we get asked on RFPs much more than, than price at this point. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you.